Hello, my name is Marilyn Burgoon. I'm an environmental activist, a grandmother and a mother, and I live in the Slocan Valley in the interior of British Columbia. We're standing at Lemon Creek. Lemon Creek is the, was the site of a severe toxic jet fuel spill in July, on July 26, 2013. At two o'clock in the afternoon, a tanker truck full of jet fuel, 33,000 liters to be exact, went over off the road and into the creek and deposited the entire amount of fuel into a fish-bearing stream. Under the Fisheries Act, it is a violation to deposit deleterious material into fish habitat. This video will show you where the fuel went into the creek, how it went all the way down and passed through the river, the Slocan River, the Kootenai River, and stopped at the Brilliant Dam. The reason we're doing this video, and I'm talking to you about this today, is because the government has never pressed charges against Executive Flight Center, nor have they taken any responsibility for the misdirection of the truck when it took the wrong turn and ended up in the creek. We waited as a community for the government to do its job and file prosecution. This has never happened, so I have exercised my constitutional right as a citizen to do what they call a private prosecution. This is a rare undertaking, and it's rare because it's very costly, it puts you before the courts, and in this case we have now had two weeks set aside in April 2016 to go before the judge. I'm Lelina Lysenko, a lawyer with Vogel, Smythe & Lysenko in Trail, BC, and I've been retained by Marilyn Burgoon to assist her in furthering a private prosecution related to the fuel spill which occurred in Lemon Creek on July 26, 2013. In September of 2014, Ms. Burgoon, who was frustrated by the inaction on the part of the provincial government, swore private information and essentially became uh, the prosecution against Executive Flight Center Fuel Services, LTD, and the province of British Columbia. The cost of a two-week trial is fairly significant, both in terms of legal fees, but mostly because of the experts that will need to be called to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt that there was, uh, or that the offense was committed. Uh, Marilyn will need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that there was a deposit of a deleterious substance into a waterway inhabited by fish. Most environmental pollution does not result from an intentional action, most people don't go out and intentionally destroy the environment. Environmental legislation exists primarily to protect the environment from destruction that happens as a byproduct of corporate activity. And as such, there's no intention required. There is no doubt there were fish killed in the Slocan River and in the Lemon Creek and in the Kootenai River. We have um, the SNC-Lavalin, a report commissioned by the government, the Ministry of Environment and Executive Flight Centre. In that report, it identifies clearly what happened, it identifies the toxicity of what went into the creek, and it talks about the dead fish, some which are endangered, some of the wildlife that was killed. I would like people to understand the significance of this case, that the courts are here to be used to make governments accountable and corporations accountable. So I'm appealing to you as people who care about water and understand the importance of fisheries in these creeks and in the river and ask that you would donate some funding towards this cause. This is Lemon Creek. We were at that site previously and the toxic fuel, the 33 thousand liters that poured out of the truck came down this channel. This is the narrowest part of the Slocan River. From this area it went on down south and will take you to the other locations that had an impact. This was a major fisheries of the traditional people, the Sinites people. This is called the Slocan Narrows. 
This is the Slocan River. It's called Perry Siding. It's an important part of the Slocan River and the highest area of biodiversity on the river stem. So when all that jet fuel entered this river system, it went into all these shallow, slow-moving backwaters. We're not judging how long the effects are. We're simply saying under the Fisheries Act, it's a criminal act to put deleterious material into a fish-bearing stream. The Slocan River has fish in it. Lemon Creek has fish in it, and we're going to work our way down to uh, the where the Slocan River enters the Kootenai River, which is another uh, important fish river. So we're going to head that way. We're seven kilometers down on the Slocan River yet again in a little village area called Winlaw, BC. And the water runs fairly quickly through here, making its way on down. So and this is Passmore. This is an old Bailey Bridge in Passmore. Uh, osprey nests are around because the rainbow trout have finally started coming back. This is Slocan Park. It's a small area along Highway 6. Highway 6 is the main highway through the area and it follows the Slocan River. This is Crescent Valley Beach. It's a popular beach for kayakers. They hold whitewater kayaking sports here. They're making it into a regional park right now. This is the most southerly end of the Slocan River. We followed it from Lemon Creek all the way down here. Now, just under the bridge here, as it goes further south, it reaches the Kootenai River. The Kootenai River flows out of Kootenai Lake, but this is where the toxic 33,000 liters came all the way down what we've just toured and now empty into another river system. We're at Brilliant Dam. This was where the final booms were set up. Now, whether it caught all the material, the toxic materials, we don't really know because the booms took hours before they were put into the flow of the river systems. And below this, this dam and the river system here, this is the Kootenai River. It flows into the Columbia River below, down into the U.S and on towards the Pacific Ocean and empties out in Vancouver, Washington. Below here, there is a major fisheries. There's fisheries that native people use in the U.S. The sturgeon is a struggling endangered species that is being restocked, not very successfully, but it does need uh, to have protected waters. And so here we are at the end of the spill tour, and I'm thankful that you're watching this and hope that from this video, you'll learn how important this case is. It takes an individual to bring a prosecution. We're doing the job of the government now, so we're asking that you help us fund this important case and that you share this with your friends and send it far and wide so that people everywhere can be part of helping a community get justice for the fish and for the waterways.